Matilda and Jonathan settled down beside each other, nestled in their blankets, surrounded by their treasured stuffed animals and plushies. Matilda carried a little lamb in her arms, while Jonathan hugged a star in his. They were excited for the story their mother was about to tell them, but Matilda was particularly excited, because her mother informed her that the story was about cotton, the little lamb that she hugged so tightly to her chest. Jonathan gruntled with annoyance, wishing the story would be about his shining star. But her mother told him not to worry, and assured him that it would also be featured. Satisfied, Jonathan stopped complaining, and his mother began to tell them their bedtime story, which went like this. Once upon a time, there was a little lamb named Cotton, and he wasn't called Cotton for nothing. He was the softest and fluffiest lamb around, and his wool was as white as snow. Cotton also had a lovely family. His flock of sheep were the kindest sheep around, and they cared for everyone dearly. Even if he didn't have such nice grass to graze on, and such a large field to play in, Cotton would have been very happy so long as his family was with him. Just like Matilda and Jonathan, Cotton also happened to go to school. It looked a little different from the schools they went to, but he still learned quite a bit. Cotton learned about the ways that sheep should behave and the ways that they should treat others. He learned about his shepherd and how he should always follow him and never get lost. Cotton learned about how other sheep and animals would probably make fun of him sometimes for being a sheep of this particular flock. But he also learned that he did not have to worry. The shepherd was always looking out for him. Cotton was excelling in school, and when he finally grew old enough, his parents decided to take him on a journey with them to greet some other sheep from another flock. But they told him that to get to the other flock, Cotton would have to cross through the woods. Cotton was a little nervous. He had never been through the woods before, and he certainly did not want to try now. Nevertheless, his parents assured him that the shepherd was watching over them. So Cotton walked with his parents towards the woods, and in the beginning, everything was fine. But soon enough, it became much darker than Cotton was used to, so he turned around, trying to become more familiar with his environment. But when he looked forward, he noticed that his parents were gone. Cotton had gotten lost. Panicking, Cotton called out for his parents. Mom? Dad? Where are you? He called out. But he received no answer, at least not from his parents. What he did hear, though, was a scary growl from another animal nearby. When it came into the light, Cotton saw that it was a wolf. A very scary wolf. The wolf called out to Cotton, making fun of him, saying, Your flock is not with you now. All that work you do, trying to be the best sheep you can be, is pointless. It's a waste of time. Nobody likes sheep anyways. The wolf inched closer to Cotton, and frightened, Cotton backed away. Think! Cotton told himself. What would mom and dad do? What would the shepherd want me to do? Cotton told the wolf, So what if nobody likes sheep? The shepherd loves me, and that's all that matters. I actually feel quite sorry for you. You must feel very lost in the woods without a shepherd to guide you. It makes sense why I've never seen you out in the field. You don't know how to leave the forest because you're lost. The wolf cackled quite a wicked laugh and was about to leap towards Cotton when a wooden staff with a shining star engraved upon it suddenly appeared in front of Cotton. It was the staff of his shepherd, and Cotton was so happy. The wolf scampered away in fear, leaving Cotton alone with the shepherd. The shepherd said to Cotton, Excellent job, little one. Remember that so long as you have me, even when you are in the midst of wolves, you will be all right. Cotton smiled in happiness and followed the shepherd to where his parents and the rest of the flock were waiting, excited to meet the other sheep. The End With that, Matilda and Jonathan's mother finished the story. They were quite scared when they heard about the wolf confronting Cotton, but that is not the emotion they felt once the story finished. Instead, they felt safe and sound, and with this feeling of comfort, they were lulled to a calming and peaceful sleep. To know the Word of God, to live the Word of God, to preach the Word, to teach the Word, is the sum of all wisdom, the heart of all Christian service. As children of God, we are asked to go out to preach His name and spread His Word, to talk about His goodness, forgiveness, and how to act Christ-like. 
Although many of us understand what he asks of us, a lot of us are afraid to go out there and take that step of outreaching to others about it. There are many reasons why, reasons why that's the case. As you can see in this story, when the lamb first started walking into the woods, things were going just fine. Symbolizing that when we first start talking about God and his word, we don't always encounter much trouble. As we go more in depth, just like how the lamb went deeper into the woods, it started getting darker and scarier. Indicating that the more we preach, the scarier it will get because people are not all understanding and willing to listen to the word of God. Finally, as the wolf appears to the lamb with its wickedness and evil laugh after listening to what the lamb has to say, it says... It describes how we as servants of the Lord should be willing to go so far to preach his word, even though we will be attacked with people who are not willing to agree with us and may even want to harm us, just like the wolf wanted to do with the lamb. Despite all this, it is important to remember that even though we might not see him right away when we are in the midst of all this, God is right there watching over us and will step in and take over for us. Even, even when the people see God is protecting us, that's when right away they will leave us, just like the wolf left the lamb in fear when the staff came. This goes to show that not only is he there to help us in times when we are scared and fear is surrounding us, but he is our protector and always ready to step in and take care of us. So always remember that no matter how scary the wolves may be, with the staff's help and protection, the lamb is much stronger than the wolf will ever be. Tribulation is something we have to face Sometimes we question our faith All my friends act different around me Check our phones and then look around and then worry Cause we're there, there among the walls Standing witness to your name You are with us through the pain Every obstacle we face is no match for a strong faith Cause it's normal to worry when things go bad We think we aren't enough But we know with you no matter the size of the issue We will work it through Cause you are there With us among the world Standing witness to your name You are with us through the pain Every obstacle we face Is no match for a strong faith Cause knowing that we have to distinct ourselves As children of God, humble and proud Surrounded by people that love me Close my eyes and then realize that you're with me Standing there, there among the wolves We stand witness to your name are with us through the pain Every obstacle we face Is no match for a strong faith God. In the name of the Father, and Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Go your way, behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. Luke chapter 10 verse 3 this was commanded by the Lord Jesus Christ in his commission to the 70 apostles, which was mentioned in book of St. Luke chapter 10. The Lord Jesus Christ sent two commissions, equipping them with some commandments. The first one to the 12 disciples or apostles in Matthew chapter 10. 
as it was written by Saint Matthew, inspired by the Holy Spirit, for he was a Jew convert and one of the twelve disciples. And the number twelve, like the twelve tribes of the children of Israel in the Old Testament and Book of Revelation, and this commission was to target the Jews, that's why the Lord commanded his disciple, as in Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The second commission was to the seventy apostles, as in Luke chapter 10. As it was written by St. Luke, inspired by the Holy Spirit, for he was a Gentile convert, and one of the seventy apostles, and the number seventy, like the seventy elders of Israel, chosen by Moses a prophet, in Exodus 24 and Numbers chapter 11, and as the seventy of the Sanhedrin assembly. This commission wasn't to target certain people, but it is for all the Gentiles, not Jews, and that's why the Lord told them, as in Luke chapter 10, verse 1, He appointed seventy others also and sent them two by two before His face into every city and place where He Himself was about to go. St. Matthew, as a Jew formerly, and one of the twelve, wrote to the Jews convert and mentioned the first commission to the twelve, but not the second one. But St. Luke, as a Gentile formerly, and one of the seventy, wrote to the Gentiles convert and mentioned the second commission to the seventy, but not the first one. Why were they called differently? And what's the difference between a disciple and an apostle? Every person who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ is called his disciple. In the Great Commission, before his ascension to heaven, as in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, the Lord commanded them, saying, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So every apostle was a disciple, but not every disciple was an apostle. The Greek word for disciple simply refers to a learner, and it's used throughout the New Testament to refer to people who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. For example, in Acts chapter 6 verse 1 it says, Now in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplying, here the word disciple simply means believers or Christians as in this context. The Greek word for apostle means one who is sent and can refer to anyone sent on a mission. An apostle is giving the authority of the one who sent him. Therefore, all the apostles were disciples. They were among the many believers in Jesus, but only a select group of disciples were chosen as the twelve apostles. Now the Lord told the apostles, the seventy apostles, I send you out as lambs among wolves. The Lord Jesus Christ himself became a lamb for our sake. St. John the Baptist spoke about him when the Lord approached him to get baptized, as in John chapter 1, verse 29. Here is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And in his crucifixion, Isaiah the prophet prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7, He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was also described by St. John the Evangelist as in Revelation chapter 7, verse 17, For the lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The Lord's mission for the apostles was not an easy one, as St. Augustine says, These wolves devour up the lambs, and so the wolves are transformed into lambs.
And here are two examples. The first example is St. Paul. St. Paul, formerly Saul, was a wolf involved in the act of the most ironically tragic events recorded in the early history of the church, which is a martyrdom of St. Stephen, the first martyr, who was a lamb as a young and zealous representative of the early church going through great trials until death. St. Paul experienced his feeling of being a wolf as he mentioned in his epistle to Galatians chapter 1 verse 13 For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. He must have portrayed the scene of St. Stephen the Lamb his speech, his act, and his forgiveness to those who stoned him. When he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, as mentioned in Acts chapter 7, verse 60, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And the wolf turned to be a lamb, preaching the gospel to the Gentiles and suffering for Christ, as he mentioned in his second epistle to Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 23 to 29. He said, In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequently, in death often, and so on. Second example is St. Arianus. Saint Arianus, the governor of Ancina in the 3rd century, who persecuted the Church of God and tortured a lot of Christians till their death, the wolf turned to be a lamb when he ordered to shoot Saint Apollonius with arrows. One of the arrows glanced back and struck his eye and destroyed it. Then one of the believers told Arianus, if you take some of St. Apollonius' blood and smear your eye with it, you will receive your sight. The governor Arianus took some of his blood, smeared his eye, and immediately he was able to see. Arianus believed in the Lord Christ, declaring his faith with great sorrow for all the evil things he had done to the Christian martyrs. Then he rose up, destroyed his idols, and refrain from torturing any of the believers and later on the formerly wolf who became a lamb accepted all tortures and sufferings by the emperor Diocletian until he was martyred. How about me and how can I relate to this and how could this be possible for me? The Lord Jesus Christ told his apostles I send you out as lambs among wolves which does not seem comforting. What normally happens when lambs find themselves in the midst of wolves? They became lunch. Lambs are helpless to defend themselves against wolves. And Christians are vulnerable to attack. But let me remind you with two things. The first thing, it is the grace of God that helps you and supports you. Not you or your position, your strength or your money or your intelligence or your logic. As St. Paul says in his first epistle to Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10, But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. The second thing is, before you experience committing yourself to dying for Christ, first exercise committing yourself to live for Christ. To say with St. Paul, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me, as in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. A reflection from St. John Chrysostom. For their comfort amid every danger was the power of him who sent them, 
And therefore said he, Behold, I send you, as if he said, This will suffice for your consolation. This will be enough to make you hope, instead of fearing the coming evils which he signifies, adding, As lambs among wolves. For this was a clear announcement of glorious triumph, that the disciples of Christ, when surrounded by their enemies as lambs among wolves, should still convert them.